Hey, are you gonna do any work today? Or do I gotta do everything again? I usually gotta do all the work. Hey guys, welcome back to my shop. Thanks for tuning in. So today, I got another little quick project to show you. And sitting over here behind me is a mid 80s 351 Windsor block. So I need to inspect this block for cracks and I got two methods I do this. Actually kind of three. First is a visual inspection. We already did pretty good on that. My eyes are getting a little old though so we definitely rely on the next two inspections more. The second one I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Magnaflux and then I'm going to go on with a pressure test. So for magnetic particle inspection I go about it with a dry type particle. I use a high powered yoke and it's accompanied with an ultralight black light which uh, illuminates the metal particles pretty good. So before I'm able to test this block, even though it comes out of the hot tank, there's still some of this crusty gasket residue left on the block. So I'm gonna have to get rid of that before I can perform either test. So to clean all this crap off, we're just gonna start with a scraper and we're just gonna hand scrape all this big crusty stuff off. Now that I got all that crusty crap off, we're gonna do it a quick wire wheeling. So now that I went ahead and got all the surfaces cleaned off that I need to inspect, we can go ahead and perform the test. All right, so now we're ready to inspect. So it's a pretty easy process. We take our yoke, and it has two legs here, and on these blocks, you're typically gonna find cracks in between water jackets and bolt holes. This, this is generally where they crack. So you put this up against the block. When you push this button, it engages the magnet, which creates a magnetic pull in between those two legs. We got a dry magnetic particle here, and it's just on a little perfume puffer, and that just shoots those particles out there. So when you engage this magnet, and you shoot those particles in there, creates a magnetic jaw in between those two legs, and it attracts those magnetic particles there. Now, if there was a crack, it would suck those particles in. So we're gonna go around all the areas that these blocks tend to crack if they do, and we're gonna check that out. After I've done that procedure on my decks, I'm going to go in here in the lifter valley and I'm going to do the same test in here because sometimes they crack in here too. And now that I've spread my magnetic particle all over the block in the places I want it to test, we're gonna have to shut out the light, turn on our black light, and go inspect our block. So now that the lights are out, we've got our black light, we can inspect our block. Now, I can see through my camera here that we're not exactly getting a great view of what's going on, but that little tint of glow is from the particles. So even though it's not all that bright on this camera, I, I can see quite far. Oh, yep, that one shows up not that bad. So from what I can gather, where I have uh, done my tests so far, we have no cracks. Now, little lines like this, that's not a crack. That is just where the one leg of the yoke was contacting. Same with, same with that line, same with this line. So those aren't cracks, you get used to it. And if we find a crack on this block, I'll be able to show you exactly what a crack looks like. So I make the decks and I make inside the lifter area and so far we're crack free, which is a good thing. Crack kills. So now I flip my block over and I'm going to do the same test and I want to test all around these bolt holes. They tend to crack here and I want to check in these oil galleries because they can crack in here. They can crack down the sides or, or the inside like so. 
and we need to test all those spots. So it's going to be the same sort of thing. This time we just shape our legs a little bit different. And then now we can get in between each main like so. Once again, it's time to shut that light out and get to inspecting. So far we're looking good. Okay, so far we're looking good. So there's a couple other places that I uh, check with the Magnaflux. Uh, the front area is one of them. Same with the uh, back end of the block and they were all good. So typically, most shops we would Magnaflux the entire block. Uh, but I'm gonna do a pressure test instead. I find it's, uh, it just comes out better. Cause if you got a pinhole in the block, the Magnaflux may or may not show it. It, it just it just makes the pinhole hard to pick up. Cracks, no problem. You can see them, they stand out like a sore thumb. But you start getting cracks or pinholes down in your bores and the Magnaflux, you might not see it. It's just a bunch of dust particles and everything looks like a pinhole really. So I like to pressure test them and that way there if there's a pinhole, I won't miss it with a pressure test. So let's get on with that. I have this plate and we're gonna mount this on the deck surface. And that's gonna block off all of these water passages. These are what allow water to passage through the cylinder head and the block. We need to block those off. Now that I got my plate on my deck, I gotta cover this inlet here. This is for the water pump, and we have one over here. Uh, these cavities are each their own, so we'd only have to block off this side to pressure test this side. It has nothing to do with that side of the block. So for blocking those off, I got some gaskets that I pop here, custom made gaskets. I mean, come on, check that out. And then we drop on our, our big aluminum plate here. Got the plates on, we go around, tighten them down. Oh, battery died. All right. Now that's not always the case of being done. For the test to be performed, the plugs need to be in. Now, these plugs, I don't care what you call them. I don't care if you call them frost plug, core plug, Welsh plug, expansion plug, I really don't give a shit. I call them expansion plugs per personally, why? Because when I buy the kit, it says expansion plug on the kit package. So for me, that's good enough. I see it called expansion plug kit all the time. I call it expansion plug kit. But like I said, I don't really care what you call them. They need to be in there for the test. So when I tore this engine apart and threw it in the hot tank, I left these plugs in there on purpose because I'm going to pressure test this block. Not because I'm not gonna change them. They will be changed, but they weren't rotted out looking. So I knew they probably seal and I need them to seal for the test. So that's why they're still in there. Now that we got that over with, Let's get on with this pressure test. So, we take our regulator, we fit that on like that, grab our airline, 
connect that and we add the air I don't know if you can see that but we add about 45 psi into the block and if I listen I don't hear any leaks that's a good sign so now we've got our block all full of air we can take our soapy water mix and we'll go around the cavity of this block and we'll spray it down with this soapy water Now it's all sprayed down, we just wait and we watch and we try to see if we can see any foaming soapy bubble action going on which would show a leak. So I look inside all the bores, everything looks good to me here. So now I'll lay it back on its top side there. And we'll make sure we perform this test under here too. This is actually the area I've most commonly found these blocks cracked. So far this one looks good. That's good to hear. So now I'll get these plates stripped off, throw it on the other side and do the same test. So this block looks pretty good so far, I haven't found any leaks, but it's what I did find. Is this is your block heater. Now, these usually kind of rot out the frost plug bore, and this is, what a, this is what a crack would look like if we had one. It would do the exact same thing as this uh, is leaking right here. So this is all leaking past the seal. Hopefully we didn't wreck the bore. If we did, no big deal. I can bore that out for the next size plug, which would be an uh, inch and five eighths on this block. And I'm one of the few shops in the area that can do that. So I actually do a lot of those. So this block, I'm gonna say, is past the crack inspection. That's good because we can't rebuild them when they're shit. So now that this is all covered in soapy water, if we left this like this, it would flash rust in no time and I would just make more work for myself to get it all cleaned up. So we're going to get the block up on in this spray wash here. Okay, so the whole point of putting our uh, wet soapy block in this machine here is this cleaning machine has a detergent in it that has some 
uh, anti-rust additives in it. So the blocks and the cast iron metal bits, they don't rust when they come out of here. Uh, if you don't rinse them off, they'll leave a white soapy residue on them and, and that's about it. So we'll get this thing out of here to make room. And the water in here is about 180 degrees. So that'll get the block really hot. It'll get it really clean, wash off all that soapy water. Uh, some of this paint that didn't come off in the first wash, that's going to come off as well. And when we take it out of this machine, because it's so hot, it's going to almost flash dry immediately. And I'm going to hit it with my airline at the same time and blast some pressed air on it. And it's going to dry it within like two minutes. It'll be, it'll be bone dry. And then we don't have to worry about it rusting. So I'm going to get on with that now. just came out of that spray wash cabinet it's nice and dry there's no more soapy water on it it's uh, still quite warm I mean if you're cold just lean up against that machine so that thing does a good job so now that I know that this is past the inspections and there's no cracks uh, this is a good core to build now so I'll be able to take it over to the other side my machine shop and I'll get it cleaned up properly and we'll get it prepped for machine work and hopefully I'll be able to take you guys on some adventures with the machining process. We'll have to see how it goes. I'm a one man shop here, pretty busy. I do my best to make these videos but sometimes I get halfway through a video and, and that's it. That's as far as I go. I move on to the next job and that's it. We never see that project again. Sorry about that, guys. But I'm going to do my best on this one here. So thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you guys later.